Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Journey. Today's topic is web crawler system design. If you ever wondered how search engines explore the vast landscape of the internet, you're in the right place. This is part of the system design interview series. Many tech companies ask system design questions as part of the recruitment process, so it's crucial to be able to solve these kind of problems. Let's start by defining what a web crawler is. A web crawler, also known as a spider or web bot, is a computer program or script that systematically browses the World Wide Web. Its purpose is to index and gather information about websites. The primary function of a web crawler is to navigate through web pages, retrieve their content, and follow hyperlinks to other pages, which leads to the creation of maps of the web. Before jumping into the system design, we need to gather functional and non-functional requirements, and we can do this by asking questions to the interviewer. I have made a whole separate video on this topic, feel free to check it out. Here is a list of requirements for our web crawler. We want our crawler to be performing search engine indexing. We want our system to focus on HTML pages. Pages with duplicate content should be ignored. We want to crawl 2 billion pages per month. Parsed HTML pages should be stored for at least 10 years. We want our system to be scalable. We want to make sure we implement politeness when crawling web pages. We want to make our system extensible. If we want to crawl different kind of content in the future, such as images, videos, or PDFs, we must be able to add such components easily. Let's do some estimates to calculate the load and storage required by our system. Here we will need to make some assumptions and you can discuss these with your interviewer. Let's assume 2 billion pages are scanned every month. The queries per second will be around 800 pages per second. You can pause the screen to see the calculations. Let's assume the peak is going to be twice as big as the average queries per second. So that is going to equal to 1600 queries per second and that's our peak. Let's now assume the average web page size is 2 megabytes. The monthly storage required to store these pages will be 4 petabytes. And assuming data will be stored for at least 10 years, we will need at least 3600 petabytes for the whole period. Now let's break down the key components of a web crawling system. The first component is the seed URL queue. In the initial stage, the crawler starts with a set of seed URLs. These are the entry points for the crawl. They are added to a queue, which serves as the starting point for exploration. Then we have the URL frontier. The URL frontier is like the to-do list of the crawler. It manages and prioritizes URLs based on factors like importance, last crawl time or page popularity. This ensures an efficient and targeted crawl. And then we have the downloader. The downloader is responsible for fetching web pages. It handles HTTP requests, retries and timeouts. It also respects rules defined in the robots.txt files to ensure ethical and responsible crawling. The robots.txt file is the standard used to communicate to web crawlers and it specifies what crawlers are allowed to download. Here is an example of a robots.txt file. So we can see in this example we have a user agent, which here is specified as a star which means that this applies the rules to all web crawlers. The second line tells the crawlers not to crawl any pages under a private directory. And the last line instructs crawlers not to crawl the specific page, which is our restricted page.html. It's important to note that not all web crawlers follow the rules in robots.txt, as it's a voluntary protocol. However, well-behaved search engines like Google typically respect these instructions. Now that we have clear requirements, we can start working on the actual high-level design of our web crawler. So this is how our system design looks like so far. We have a queue that feeds different kinds of seed URLs into the URL frontier. We can make this system more decoupled by adding another queue in between the URL frontier and the downloader. The downloader then picks a URL from the queue and queries the DNS server to resolve the URLs into IPs. Moving on to the next set of components, we have HTML parser, content deduplication, document repository, URL extraction, and URL deduplication. Let's start with the HTML parser. 
After downloading a page, the HTML parser extracts relevant information such as text content, metadata and links. This step is like deciphering the language of the web. Then we have content deduplication. To avoid redundancy, the crawler checks for duplicate content using hash functions. If we have seen the page before, we can discard it, otherwise we save it in a disk storage. The next component in our system is the document repository. This follows up from the previous component. Crawl documents are stored in a repository including metadata. This could be a distributed file system or a database, ensuring scalability and reliability. The next step is URL extraction. In this component, we take our parse HTML pages and look for URLs that could be used for crawling new pages. And then we have URL deduplication. To avoid the redundancy, the crawler checks for duplicate URLs using hash functions or bloom filters. This helps in efficient crawling and storage. If the URL is already in the storage, we move on. Otherwise, we add it to the queues feeding into the URL frontier. We can really decouple this system by putting queues in between services and I hope you get the idea. So I'll stop adding queues for now and focus on the main components. So going back to our system, we have now added all the data processing components we have just discussed and this is how the system design looks like so far. Okay, so now you might be wondering how this system is going to handle 2 billion crawls a month or how we are going to make this scalable. The answer is easy. In this case, as you can see we have queues in between components. This allows us to decouple the system. So for example, we could have multiple downloader instances picking up messages from the queue and we could do the same with the rest of the components. Another interesting thing to notice here is that depending on the region we are crawling in the world, the URL seeds will be different as each country will have different sets of optimal URL seeds. If we were to crawl a big portion of the web, we could have different instances of our system running in different data centers across the globe. This will also speed up crawling as our instances will be closer to the data sources. Let's talk about additional features we want our web crawler to have. Crawl, control and monitoring. To prevent overloading servers, the crawler needs to follow politeness policies. It will respect crawl delays and monitor system health errors and performance using logs and dashboards. This will help in maintaining a smooth operation. And the last thing to discuss here is recrawl strategy. The crawler will need to implement a strategies for deciding when to recrawl pages. This could be based on content changes, update frequency or other factors, ensuring the information is up to date. And here is the final overview of how our web crawler system design looks like. If you have any feedback or requests for new videos, leave them in the comment box below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it somewhat useful to reach your goal. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it allows me to keep creating more and better content for you, all completely free of charge. See you on the next video.